Hello everyone, uh, welcome to lecture session 9 on convective heat transfer. In the previous lecture session, uh, we had solved a few numerical problems related to internal flow force convective heat transfer. In today's class, let us take up the natural convection heat transfer. Uh, this is the second half of the module. Um, according to the prescribed syllabus, you don't have any analytical uh, solution uh, that is to be discussed in the class. Um, uh, we will quickly start uh, with the physics of natural convection. Once we get through with the physical nature of this phenomenon, so we can proceed to solve some numerical problems like force convection and we can end the uh, end the module okay so with this plan let us start uh, our discussion on natural convection heat transfer so this is a very important mode of uh, convective heat transfer you will find many applications for uh, natural convection heat transfer some of the commonly um, encountered applications include cooling of electronic uh, components, electronic chips. If you open your computer and see the motherboard, you will see a lot of uh, circuits uh, with small heat sinks which are placed on top. And these uh, uh, heat sinks are there to remove the heat from the uh, electronic component that is underneath. And uh, heat is lost from the fin surface to the surrounding air through natural convection. Um, this is a very good application for electronic component cooling also. So if you are interested, you can pursue how these fins are actually designed. So this is also having uh, an application of module 2 where, wherein you studied uh, something about fins and how heat transfer enhancement can be brought about using fins. Okay. Now coming to the physics of this natural convection heat transfer problem. First, let us um, understand why is it called natural convection. So the thing here is natural convection heat transfer does not involve an external forcing mechanism like forced convection. So what is an external forcing mechanism? So it can be um, a pressure gradient which is artificially created by driving a fan or uh, something like that. So that aspect is not there in natural convection. Here you bring about the movement of the fluid by encashing uh, the buoyancy uh, principle. So let us see how this is actually uh, done. Uh, let me take up as an example. Let us take a domain. Uh, let us take a vertical plate for the sake of explaining the principle. So this is a vertical plate, okay, so which has a hot surface such that Tw is greater than T infinity. So this is the temperature of the uh, fluid in the free stream. For sake of simplicity, let me assume that the fluid is air, okay, and the surface is maintained at a constant temperature of Tw which is greater than T infinity. Now you know that uh, the fluid which is in close contact with the surface will get heated up. Once the fluid gets hot, you know its density uh, decreases. So due to the decreased density, the fluid starts rising upwards. So if this is the direction of gravity, so the fluid starts rising upwards. And once it reaches the top of the plate, uh, what happens is due to the inertia of the fluid, the fluid can start moving in this direction so it can also move the other in the other direction also for let us assume that it moves in this direction and after some distance so the inertia will kick in and due to the uh, weight due to the gravity which is acting downwards the fluid starts moving downwards now along the uh, gravity okay so then again some fresh fluid will come in contact with the hot surface, it will rise and it will come back. So this sets up a current. So this is called as natural convection current. It's a convective current. Now, what is the driving force for this convective current? It is the temperature difference. So the temperature difference is the reason why this current is getting established 
at the first uh, instant okay so if you observe closely even here the pressure the flow is actually due to pressure uh, difference only because lower density means lower pressure so uh, you will understand that uh, the flow here is also driven by pressure like uh, forced convection but the pressure gradient is not uh, created by any external agency it is due to the temperature difference that the pressure difference is getting created which is driving the uh, flow so that is the uh, difference here and if you observe closely these two are interlinked so the pressure change and the temperature change are intertwined here uh, unlike what happened in forced convection where these two were separated so temperature change was separate pressure uh, differences were separate so you will see the implication of this uh, in the mathematical analysis of natural convection uh, that we will be taking up a short while from now okay so uh, these are the things that you should recognize and to put in very simple terms you can say that natural convection is due to buoyancy so buoyancy is the uh, force that is created due to the difference in pressure so buoyant forces are created due to the temperature change which will drive the uh, flow okay uh, for the sake of analysis let us take this axis as y positive y and this will be x so for, for our analysis we will uh, use this uh, nomenclature only okay let me erase this now let us take the governing equations and see how the equations will appear for natural convection case okay the governing equations are listed below for steady two dimensional incompressible flow now when i say incompressible so suddenly you will ask me sir there is density change involved in the problem how is this incompressible flow situation if you recall our discussion on uh, continuity equation derivation we have made a very uh, qualitative difference between incompressible fluid and incompressible flow incompressible flow is the one wherein the volumetric strain rate is zero so uh, this is what we are considering here it does not mean that density is constant okay so incompressible flow situation we uh, we are considering so when you include these uh, assumptions into our governing equations so you i have listed all the governing equations here for you okay so there is a small typo here so in the y momentum equation this is dou p by dou y sorry this is dou p by dou y so you observe this y momentum equation carefully because this is what we are interested in so the y momentum equation has one extra term here when you compare it with the forced convection problem that we have solved so if this is what is this this is body force term body force so this is volumetric in nature so body force why is it negative why i have used the negative sign because it is acting against uh, uh, this uh, y direction we are considering so we have considered positive y in the upward direction so the buoyant force acts downwards so uh, this is a uh, body force acts downwards so it is minus rho g okay so this is the only addition here now what is the mathematical implication of this uh, body force or what is the uh, effect that this brings into the analysis of your problem if you look closely so here you know that density is not a constant okay it is a um, function of temperature so you know higher the temperature lower the density it's a function of temperature and what this does is now you will see that these two equations the y momentum equation let us uh, presume the momentum equations and the energy equation they are coupled the y momentum equation and the energy equation are coupled so what do i mean when i say coupled so in force convection problem if you recall how we solved the energy equation so we already had a velocity profile we had a velocity profile like this we substituted that velocity profile and we obtained the uh, solution for the temperature uh, nusselt number and uh, others okay but in this case you don't have the luxury of doing that why because the both the equations are related you cannot solve for 
velocity profile without uh, addition of temperature so temperature effects are there in the velocity so therefore these two equations needs to be solved simultaneously and this adds to the mathematical uh, complexity of natural convection problem compared to force convection problem okay so this is the important difference that you should make out when you compare force convection and natural convection problem okay yeah let us proceed this we can simplify the governing equations as we did uh, in the force convection case of flow over a flat plate so this is more closely related to external flow uh, situation almost similar but uh, we will we will find the differences and i will uh, point out to those things whenever possible so obviously there is body force which is being added okay simplification of the governing equations using boundary layer assumption again so the y momentum equation intuitively you can observe that it is more dominant compared to the x uh, momentum equation why because the entire effect of your temperature gradient is to create this uh, buoyant force or the body force which is the important part of this entire discussion on natural convection heat transfer so obviously that term is present in the y momentum equation so it means that y momentum equation is dominant so you need not consider the x equation for uh, further analysis okay it can be observed that dou p by dou x will tend to zero okay so this is again from our boundary layer uh, discussion that we had already uh, done in the force convection chapter also pressure outside the boundary layer when dou p by dou x tends to zero pressure outside the boundary layer is impressed upon inside the boundary layer so as uh, uh, we considered in the external flow problem that we had discussed okay since unlike force convection here you, you should make this uh, uh, difference and you should understand this properly in the force convection problem let me take the flow over a flat plate so your boundary layer developed uh, like this so what was the velocity at the edge of the boundary layer u was equal to u infinity so this is how you actually uh, considered but in this case if this is the boundary layer this is the natural convection case so at the edge here so you will see that u is zero so you don't have u equals u infinity type of situation the fluid is stationary here the fluid is uh, stagnant the fluid is not moving outside the boundary layer and the movement is only happening inside because of the pressure uh, the temperature change that is happening due to the presence of this hot uh, vertical wall okay so please remember uh, this difference here u equals u infinity outside the boundary layer here u is zero or velocity is zero the, the fluid is not moving okay it is stationary now for a stationary fluid you know from fluid statics so you know that pressure in very simple terms is rho g h okay if you write it in a differential format so you will get this so outside the boundary layer you have this uh, p infinity uh, uh, differential of p infinity the change of p infinity with respect to y in this direction if you take so it is minus of uh, rho infinity into g rho infinity corresponds to the uh, density of the uh, fluid which is away from the wall okay so th this can be easily written uh, as per this equation from fluid statics okay now let us substitute this in our y momentum equation if you do the substitution so your y momentum equation will assume the format like this so i will substitute for the pressure gradient dou p by dou y so after substitution you will get this okay yes now even though the density on lhs uh, is a function of temperature if you observe the uh, y momentum equation so you have a density here also obviously if this is a temperature function of temperature this should also be a, temp a function of temperature but if you think which 
term has more effect on your natural convection problem obviously this is more important than this it it does not mean that this is not a function of temperature and you can neglect it it's not like that but still if you observe the physical uh, phenomenon that is happening this term has more uh, weightage compared to this term so that is what is being expressed in that point here even though density on lhs is a function of temperature the term on rhs is related to the primary effect of this uh, particular problem which is the body force okay so there is something called as business approximation this is very important in natural convection uh, heat transfer business approximation what does it state it states that the density variation with temperature is only important for the body force term so this brings about lot of simplification in the mathematical analysis you need to assume this otherwise what happens is so you on both sides you will have a function of temperature it becomes somewhat mathematically very difficult to solve the problem so since you know that the rhs term has more weightage than the lhs term uh, depending on the nature of the problem itself so you can safely uh, neglect the uh, density term on the lhs so you can assume that uh, on lhs density is same as that of density of the fast stream fluid okay rho infinity now by taylor's series expansion you can expand this density which is a function of temperature like this so i am neglecting the higher order terms i am eliminating the higher order terms okay you know by the definition what is beta what is this actually beta is remember volumetric volumetric expansion coefficient volumetric expansion coefficient beta so this is given by 1 by specific volume into change of specific volume with respect to temperature so since we are writing it for the fluid fast stream fluid beta infinity i have used as the notation so this will when you convert this specific volume to 1 by density so you will obviously get this i think you will easily obtain this negative sign also after you differentiate it then your density on the rhs which is a function of temperature this is a function of temperature can be expressed like this so what i have done is i have expressed this function of temperature in terms of fast stream uh, properties and temperature okay which is easier to solve now therefore if you substitute it in our y momentum equation so the final form of the y momentum equation will assume this format so this is the simplified version of the momentum equation as applicable to our natural convection problem using boundary layer assumption okay so remember this expression yeah now the other equations also you can simplify the x momentum equation i have not written at all as it is not very Uh, useful because it is not dominant compared to the y momentum equation the energy equation obviously will become uh, like this so there is not not much to simplify here so you, i have eliminated this term sorry so here there is a small mistake i have written this should be x square so if you compare do square t by do y square and do square t by do x square which is greater so if i take this problem this is y axis and this is x axis you have your boundary layer here so if you do a simple order of magnitude analysis so this term uh, this term so i'll write it here only so what is this this is delta t by y square so if this is uh, h height h so it will become delta t by h square okay and this is delta t by delta square if i take the boundary layer thickness as delta so obviously this is uh, greater than this okay because delta is very small 
the similar assumption that we have made in uh, external flow uh, forced convection problem. So delta is a very small, the boundary layer thickness is extremely small. So this uh, term will become greater compared to uh, this term. So you can safely uh, neglect this term and uh, take only del square t by del uh, x square okay, on the RHS. That is the simplification. Yeah. Please change this. This is not y squared. This should be x squared. Yeah. The above equations are, the, are general in nature. Please, uh, one thing that we have to note here is, we is the above equation only applicable for natural convection problem? No, you are not actually writing anything specially for natural convection here. You have just included a body force term. But you don't know whether the uh, flow is purely due to natural convection or due to forced convection. So if it is uh, due to forced convection, this term will become negligibly small. Okay, it's somewhat like this. Okay, you don't know whether these equations actually correspond to a purely natural convection uh, situation. So determination of that requires further analysis. We will do that now. Okay. Now consider uh, the non-dimensional forms of above equations. To non-dimensionalize it, I have considered Vc. What is Vc? Vc in this case is a characteristic velocity. So I have mentioned it here. Some velocity uh, which is acting on the fluid. So Vc is in this direction. Characteristic velocity. Uh, that is what uh, we are considering okay so this vc uh, can be used to non dimensionalize our velocity let me write the non dimensionalized velocity as u star uh, v star uh, to non dimensionalize the x coordinate let us take x by h uh, the height of the wall itself as the uh, uh, useful thing to non dimensionalize this and theta is a non-dimensional temperature, T minus T infinity by Tw minus T infinity. So this is what we will be writing. Okay, so now if you do this and uh, substitute these assumptions in our uh, equation to non-dimensionalize the governing equations, Y momentum and energy equation. So this is what you will get. So I leave it to you as an exercise to uh, uh, do this you will easily do you can easily do this it's not very difficult so you, ne you need to replace v with v star uh, finally you will get these uh, terms in the outside the brackets if you do it okay so this is the final form non-dimensionalized form of governing equations okay if you observe here the coefficient of body force term the coefficient of body force term is what uh, decides whether forced convection is dominant or natural convection is dominant. So this coefficient is the one which actually decides which which is dominant. Okay. Now consider this coefficient g, this one, by Vc squared. You consider this uh, coefficient. So this coefficient, so I have considered the y momentum equation only because to decide whether it is forced or natural convection case, the momentum equation is uh, required, not the energy equation. Okay. So now this term is the one which actually tells you whether the uh, flow, uh, the situation is a forced convection situation or a uh, uh, natural convection situation. So you will rearrange this slightly. If you rearrange, so you get a new constant, which is very, very important for natural convection. So let me highlight this. It is named as Grashof number. Okay. By rearranging this like this, multiply and uh, uh, divide by h squared and mu squared. So if you do that, h squared, mu squared, multiply and divide. So this h squared is sent to this h. So it will become h cube. Okay. So this new squared, you send it here. So this will become. Okay. So Grashof number uh, is important to natural convection uh, heat transfer. 
So it is very similar to the definition of uh, Reynolds number that we used for forced convection. So here it represents the buoyant forces uh, with respect to viscous forces. So there Reynolds number represented inertial inertia forces with respect to viscous forces, the ratio. Here it is buoyant forces, that's all. The ratio Grashof number to uh, Reynolds number squared. So this is again named as a uh, another non-dimensional number. So all these non-dimensional numbers are named after uh, researchers of Esther years as a mark of respect. So this is named as Richardson number, Ri. Okay. So we have now defined a new dimensionless number which is very important in natural convection heat transfer which is called as Grashof number. Okay. Now you got this ratio. Now what? Depending on this ratio's value, you can decide which one is uh, dominant, either forced convection or natural convection. How? Like this. If this ratio, that is GR by RE squared, that is the Richardson number for simplicity. If this is very low, if its value is very less, so then obviously the uh, body force term of the Y momentum equation will get eliminated and again you will go back to the force convection equation. So force convection becomes do a dominating phenomenon. If, it, if this Richardson number is very high, obviously natural convection dominates the forced convection. Finally, there are also situations where uh, both can be present, both natural convection and forced convection. This is particularly the case when the temperature difference is very high and you have the velocity of flow which is not very uh, very high. So when this is the situation, so you can have the combined mode also which is called as mixed convection. Okay. So please note this uh, discussion on Richardson number. So uh, we have taken the coefficient of the body force term in the Y momentum equation and we have shown that when uh, the forced convection or natural convection will become dominant. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Since we have already noted that mathematical analysis of this uh, natural convection problem is pretty involved and very difficult because of the coupling of both uh, Y momentum equation and the energy equation. So an order of magnitude analysis uh, scaling analysis as it is referred to is very uh, useful in this uh, situation and it will uh, it will capture all the physics of the problem but not to that exact uh, solution that you want okay that is sufficient for us for the time being let us try to uh, establish the physics okay now consider the uh, governing equations so first is dou u by dou x plus dou v by dou y equals zero now, uh, let me take that vertical plate again for comparison so that we don't lose track. So this is the vertical plate, this is the y direction and this is the x direction I'll magnify. It. So this is the uh, fluid boundary layer that is getting created. So uh, the velocity in this uh, u direction, uh, in the x direction u so let us assume that the characteristic velocity along u is uc. So characteristic velocity along x direction, characteristic velocity along x is uc. Along v similarly it is vc. We have already used this uh, in the previous cases. Okay. So the energy equation, if you scale it, will assume a format of this nature. Okay. Now if you use this uh, continuity equation and you will get an expression. So this is nothing but delta T Vc by H. If you use this here, okay. So if you do this, uh, if you equate these two, so obviously you will get this. Okay, so you will get this alpha h by delta t squared. Uh, this is Vc. Okay. 
you will recognize that all these terms uh, let me write so if by scaling analysis you will understand all these terms are of the same scale same scale so if you substitute this again you will obtain this only the, their scaling is this uh, same okay so vc so you will see that by equating these two terms by equating these two this one and this one so and using this uh, uh, relationship you can easily get vc as alpha h by delta t square so this is a very important result let me erase this yes yes now if you consider the momentum equation again so if you observe closely the momentum equation so you will see that the left hand side is nothing but it represents the inertial forces inertia it ref represents the inertia this represents the viscous forces or you can call fluid friction also if you are uh, if you want so this represents the buoyancy buoyancy effect now if i write the scaling for each of these terms so i will get uh, something like this okay i'll get something like this of the two inertia terms of these two terms obviously this term is more dominant than this term this term is more dominant okay to determine i think you can recognize this directly to determine whether inertia forces are dominating compared to viscous forces or vice versa consider now an interesting thing with natural convection is so you don't know whether the inertia forces are dominating or viscous forces are dominating so you can find that out by considering these ratios consider the ratio of inertia to buoyancy inertial forces to buoyancy so if you do that ratio and if you do the simplification if you do the simplification you will see that by rearranging you will get something like this by rearranging this term so i want uh, this is h square by delta power 4 so i again multiply another h square i have multiplied another h square and you i have used my uh, grashof number definition here and i have obtained the grashof number also i you will easily get this so you try to uh, multiply and divide by terms to obtain this uh, format okay again we are now defining a, a new non dimensional number ra so if you recognize this ra is the rayleigh number l e i g h so which is extremely important in natural convection heat transfer rayleigh number is very simple it is gr into pr okay so this is very closely related to nusselt number also so rayleigh number a new uh, non dimensional number we have defined now this is given by uh, kinematic viscosity into diffusivity divided by g beta delta t h q so it relates your uh, grashof number and prandtl number it's a multiplication of these two terms now again you consider the other ratio that is viscous by uh, buoyancy if you consider this ratio and again rearrange you will find that the expression is almost similar but you don't have the prandtl number term okay so now how to decide which one is dominant either viscous by buoyancy or uh, inertia by buoyancy so you can only decide by the value of prandtl number why so i'll just write here for the sake of comparison so the inertia by buoyancy term so this was h by delta t whole power 4 1 by rayleigh number into 1 by prandtl number now how do you decide either this is dominant or this is dominant so you can only decide by seeing the value of prandtl number how if the prandtl number is very large if the prandtl number is very large so then this term will become negligibly smaller 
small when PR is very large. So you can neglect the uh, inertia effect then this will become dominant. If Prandtl number is very small then what happens this will become dominant and this will become weaker okay so let us take these two limiting cases now and see how things change if we consider these two okay yes yeah when prandtl number is very large than one okay inertia forces our inertia by buoyancy will become very small compared to the ratio of viscous forces to buoyancy. So this will become dominant as I demonstrated in the previous slide. So therefore this term is of the order of 1. So delta T by H will assume the value of Ra to the power of minus 1 by 4 because the other term becomes 1. So this term becomes uh, it will take the order of magnitude of 1. So delta T by H that is the thermal boundary layer thickness divided by h is Ra power minus 1 by 4. So this is a very classic uh, relationship that you will find. This order of magnitude analysis captures everything. So in the final form if you do uh, the uh, uh, solution analytically, what is the solution methods that are available? You can either go with the similarity analysis uh, or you can uh, take up the momentum integral approach uh, that we employed or the energy integral approach to find the uh, uh, thermal boundary layer thickness as we did in the first convection problem. You can also do it in natural convection problem. You will get the same result. Only thing is you will get a constant here. Delta T by H equals some constant. That value you will get after you do that uh, tedious mathematical analysis. But the physics is this. So the variation is really a number to the power of minus 1 by 4 only. Okay. To find Nusselt number again you can consider the wall heat flux the same logic we have used. So Nusselt number will vary uh, as some constant into Rayleigh number to the power of 1 by 4. So this is the important result that you will get when Prandtl number is very large. So what uh, when will Prandtl number be very large? So for uh, highly viscous fluids so this is the case like uh, oils, uh, uh, liquids in particular, you can use uh, this relationship to get the Nusselt number. Okay, relationships of this format. Now, when Prandtl number is less than 1, so when it is very small. So before we go to that case, let us also look into the some aspects of the distribution of velocity profile. So you see when Prandtl number is very greater than 1, so in this diagram you can see some interesting things about the velocity profile. So you see this is the velocity profile. I can show with arrow also. So it is pointing in the vertical direction. It is moving upwards. This is the temperature profile. Okay. This delta you can call this as the boundary layer, velo velocity boundary layer is a misnomer because that is pertaining to forced convection. Um, for simplicity, let us just call this as uh, boundary layer. Okay. So this boundary layer thickness delta represents the uh, variation of velocity profile. So what are the observations you can make in this profile? Let me erase this so that uh, things are clearer. So you can see some important points here. So this is the temperature difference. So let me write. So this is if you consider. So this is T infinity and this is T wall. So this is T infinity and this is T wall. Okay. One important observation that you can make is even outside the uh, thermal boundary layer even outside the thermal boundary layer, you have some uh, velocity of flow. You have the velocity of flow. According to the theory, when this, at this point, what is the uh, temperature change? Delta T is zero. So once the delta T reaches zero, your flow should have uh, 
ideally stop but it does not stop why because you know due to inertia the flow will continue moving the flow will continue moving and it will become zero only when uh, the boundary layer thickness delta is reached at uh, after this point you will have the velocity profile or the velocity reaching zero okay so this is one very important difference that you should make out so this is the characteristic velocity we have used the nomenclature vc okay this is the characteristic uh, velocity in the y direction uh, this is the velocity with which the uh, flow is actually moving in the upward direction and this region is wherein your uh, fluid friction is uh, dominant and it is comparable to buoyancy or the flu the viscous forces so this friction is nothing but viscous forces viscous forces are in uh, competition with your buoyancy after this your viscous forces will be balanced by the inertia of the fluid so once the inertia dominates the uh, viscous forces so you will reach zero velocity okay so let us uh, quickly put these points into a proper format so if you want further information about this or an in-depth discussion on this you can readily refer to adrian bajan so uh, convective heat transfer is a very good book so which will give you the fundamental concepts of uh, uh, all the fundamental concepts related to convective heat transfer the order of magnitude analysis or the scaling analysis that we are employing from uh, many classes now is actually presented in this book so you can uh, utilize this book and you can obtain a good insight about the physics of convective heat transfer so okay so as i pointed out the velocity of the driven layer of the fluid does not come to zero once t equals t infinity due to inertia the fluid continues to move even after the temperature becomes t equals t infinity uh, when there is no temperature gradient this fluid still moves because of the inertia and its velocity becomes zero so the velocity becomes zero so there is a zero missing here velocity becomes zero only when the viscous forces overcome the inertia of the fluid okay now if you calculate uh, the ratio of delta to delta t so by a simple analysis this order of magnitude terms we had already obtained in the previous slides you just substitute so you will get this uh, ratio delta by delta t is prandtl number raised to half okay so when prandtl number is very large obviously this delta is very large compared to delta t which means uh, when compared to the thickness of the uh, temperature profile or the thermal boundary layer uh, the driven fluid is thicker so more fluid will be driven because of your temperature gradient Now let us consider the other case when Prandtl number is very small. When this is very small, obviously the inertia forces uh, dominate. Inertia by buoyancy ratio will be greater compared to viscous uh, to buoyancy ratio. So you will have this variation. This Prandtl number will get added. So the Prandtl number will get added to this uh, uh, thing here. In the previous case, this Prandtl number was not there. Dependency on this term was not there. And the Nusselt number will uh, take up the format of this uh, nature. Rayleigh number to the power of one fourth, Prandtl number to the power of one fourth. Quickly looking at the velocity profile in this case, so you will see that the temperature profile over encompasses your uh, uh, velocity profile. So it will come somewhat uh, like this. So delta T layer is driven upward by buoyancy and is restrained by inertia so if you see here the inertia forces are dominant so the movement of the fluid is restrained by inertia but what happens is is there no viscosity there is viscosity but the effects of viscosity is confined to a very small uh, layer uh, near the wall which is called as a viscous sub layer so you can see here this is highlighted 
in this region. This is called as a viscous sublayer indicated by delta suffix V. And if you do the same analysis that we did uh, in the previous case, you will find that delta V by delta T is again Prandtl number to the power of half, but this value is very small. The viscous effects are now confined to a very small layer uh, which is uh, about uh, near the wall when compared to the previous case where it was very pronounced. Okay, Velocity profile is uh, as wide as the temperature profile. Okay, uh, The viscous effects are confined to a very thin layer. So this is the uh, outcome of uh, when the fluid's Prandtl number is very less than 1. Okay. So this uh, completes our discussion on the physics of the natural convection uh, heat transfer problem. What are the things we have recognized is in natural convection heat transfer, the momentum equation and the energy equation are coupled uh, because of the presence of the body force term which involves density. So you need to solve these two equations together. So this is one mathematical aspect of natural convection problem. Then uh, we have seen for two cases when Prandtl number is very large and Prandtl number is very less. So how the uh, variation of Nusselt number happens. So when Prandtl number is very large, you see that it is uh, it varies only with Rayleigh number uh, to the power of 1 by 4. When it is very less, it varies along with uh, Rayleigh number. Prandtl number will also come in Prandtl number raised to 1 by 4. Okay. And also we have seen how to recognize whether forced convection is dominant or natural convection is dominant or both these uh, effects are present by calculating something called as Richardson number. So that also we have seen and we have recognized the important non-dimensional numbers which are Grashof number and Rayleigh number for natural convection heat transfer. This is what we have done until now. Let us quickly move to the last uh, part of this lecture that is dimensional analysis of natural convection heat transfer problem similar to force convection problem. So you can also do natural convection uh, problem. You can do a dimensional analysis. So already we have established the dimensionless numbers just for the sake of uh, finding it out using this method. So we can do it. So almost all properties are similar. So there is nothing uh, changing. Only thing is instead of velocity, you will now have the buoyant force term. This buoyant force will come in G beta delta T. Okay. So this uh, term I have added. Otherwise everything else is the same. Again you have seven uh, variables, four fundamental variables. So three dimensionless groups you should get. Please do this on your own because you are uh, already studied this uh, in, forced, uh, in fluid mechanics also. I think you will uh, do this because I have given all the requisite information. This is very important. Please note from your examination point of view. In the semester and examinations, many times they have asked this question. If you do the things properly and if you choose these repeating variables, K, Rho, LC and U, same repeating variables that we have uh, chosen in the force convection problem. So if you do this, your crash off number you will get as one uh, dimensionless group. Uh, the second one will be Prandtl number and third one will be Nusselt. These two are one and the same. Only the Reynolds number is replaced by Grashof number. So you can now compare these two phenomena. Uh, their Reynolds number will become important here. Grashof number will become important. Okay. So according to Pi theorem, you know that Nusselt number should be a function of these two non-dimensional uh, numbers. So it is a function of Grashof and Prandtl or Rayleigh number in general because Rayleigh number is GRPR. Okay. So please do this dimensional analysis uh, in a detailed way. Uh, you will definitely get these three non-dimensional groups and you can show that Nusselt number is a function of GR and PR. This is how they will ask the question in the examination. They will ask for a natural convection problem show that Nusselt number is a function of Grashof and Prandtl number. Okay. Yes. With this, let us uh, conclude this lecture. In the next lecture session, let us take up a few numerical problems and uh, with that, we will come to the end of module 3 
and we can wrap this uh, module in the next session. Thank you. Let us meet in the next lecture session.